everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be diving into the new palette that was recently launched from Makeup by Mario. This is called the Ethereal Eyes Palette. This retails for a whopping $68. I will be honest, when I first saw the price of this, I was a little taken back. I was like, whoa, that's a little bit much. And don't get me wrong, I know a lot of brands are up in their prices on things. Like, it just seems to kind of be the thing now, right? When the economy struggles and things start to go up as far as like gas and food and stuff, makeup's gonna go up. But in my opinion, the $68 was a little steep for 12 shades. Now, I did pick this up at Sephora during the Sephora holiday event, so I did save 20% off with my Rouge membership. So with that discount, this palette cost me $54.40. So that was a little bit better than 68, and to be completely honest with you, I feel like that's what this palette should have been priced at. I would say between the 50 and $55 mark. It, that's just my opinion for 12 shades. So, with all of that said, in this video, I'm going to be creating three eyeshadow looks using the palette, along with sharing tons and tons of swatches and comparisons. You guys know, anytime I review an eyeshadow palette, I like to share a lot of swatches and comparisons, especially now as we are getting to the point where we have a lot of makeup, it's nice to see what we already have in comparisons to the new launches. Now in the three eyeshadow looks, I used every shade but this top shade right here. And I did have some struggles with the palette overall, which I will definitely get into that in the tutorial portion of the video. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the description on this. This is being described as Mario's first multi-finish eyeshadow palette with 12 shades in suede mattes natural metallics and glossy shimmer finishes. So this is Mario's dream palette. It is designed to create effortless ethereal eye looks featuring three unique finishes. The suede mattes offer enhanced grip for rich color. The natural and metallics feature micronized pigments for a seamless application. And the glossy shimmers are infused with pearls coated with emollient binders to impart a reflective wet like shine on the lids. So I would agree with that. So these three shades right here are the glossy shimmers and then these two are your traditional metallics. And let me say this, these are gorgeous. So they are very beautiful. And in my opinion, they apply better with a brush than a finger because the brush really picks the pigment up and lays it on the lid just gorgeously. And I don't feel like these will get hard panned. If you've ever experienced those pearlized kind of topper shades where they're meant to give that wet look to the eye, a lot of the times, not all the time, but oftentimes the formula can get hard panned. And I don't see this happening with this formula. It's super silk-like to the touch and when you swatch it, it's like, oh, okay, but it's when you pick it up with a brush that in my opinion, you get the best impact. So swatching it, it's okay, but a brush really applies these like a dream. So that's pretty much the details on this. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the three tutorials using the palette, kind of sharing some of my struggles along the way. And then we will get into the swatches and comparisons. And once we get through those, I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, so my palette has arrived. Let's go ahead and jump into this. This is what it looks like. We're gonna do just a quick close up on it so you guys can see it. All right, it's been a while since I've used a Makeup by Mario palette, I'm gonna be honest. These mattes feel quite creamy and they swatch really well. So like, this is just, I mean, they swatch really well. They do and they feel really, really buttery. I'm gonna take a blending brush and I'm gonna go into this shade. I wanna see if that shade builds anything, any dimension in the crease uh, on my complexion. I will be honest, this palette kind of reminds me of the Tarte Juicy palette, which you guys know I'll definitely be comparing it. That works on my complexion and it builds really well. I'm not mad at that. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I'm 
Now I'm gonna grab the Makeup by Mario E5 brush. I lost the writing on this part. I think it's the E5. I'm gonna go into this shade. And also the outer corner. These mattes are extremely buttery. I'm gonna go back into the first shade that we used and I'm gonna kind of bring that into the crease. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. Now I'm gonna take a Smith 253 brush and I'm gonna go into this pretty gold shade. Okay, I'm gonna take the BK Beauty smudge brush and I'm gonna go into this one right here. So I went ahead and threw on some concealer. Let's jump into the lower lash line. I'm gonna take the BK Beauty 209 brush and I'm gonna go into this shade right here. So I just added a little bit of that dark color here. I'm gonna bring a little bit of that dark shade on the outer corner. I went off camera for a minute because I'm struggling a little bit with the mattes, especially when I grab this shade because they're so soft. When you put your brush in there, it see how it picks up a lot? Like it picks up a lot. Let me get a clean brush just so you guys can see. So I'm going into this shade. See how much picks up and see kind of the fallout coming down into the pan. Because of that, the brush picks up so much, right? And it's a lot of pigment that you have to blend. And I've worked and worked and worked, and I still have a few spots, like you'll notice like right here. Right there on that brow bone, I'm getting a tiny bit of patching, but if I keep adding more product, it kind of starts to turn a weird color because that shade's so light. I need that shade to be more of a blending shade and it just isn't quite working. So I keep kind of messing with it, trying to get that to buff out. And I'm just not having the best luck with it. It's the thing though, the look is really pretty. So even though I'm kind of struggling with this eyeshadow look in particular, like I would love to be able to blend this out a little bit better, but every time I try, even with a really soft brush, it, is a little tricky. I'm gonna move on to the next eye because I am gonna be wiping this off for the third and final look. So I'm gonna leave this here. We're gonna move on to the next eye and see if I continue to have this issue or it was just a fluke and the shades that I chose, you know, it always doesn't work, right? It, you don't ever know if it's the actual formula or you did something to create the mess, right? And that's why I think it's always important to do you know, a few looks with a palette. So we'll see how it goes. That's it for look number one. Let's go ahead and jump into look number two. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to look number two. If you're like me, you're probably curious to see how these shades look on their own. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start the look with that shade and just see how they apply. So I'm gonna use my Smith 253 and I'm gonna put it on dry and I'm gonna go into this pinky shade. Brush picks up a lot. Oh, these shades are so pretty, you guys. It doesn't have a lot of opacity. It just kind of enhances the eye and really brightens it. And I think it's a gorgeous texture. Like, I'm gonna go into this shade right here, but see how much the brush picks up. So I'm gonna tap off just to make sure I don't lose control. And I'm gonna sweep that there on the brow bone. The thing is, is that the darker shades, they blend really easily. That's the thing is that they blend really easily. It's just where I'm struggling is the light shades when I use them to blend, they're so pigmented that they kind of change the 
the color of the darker color, they start to get a little bit too ashy for me. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but you know how if you have a darker color down and you go over top of it with a lighter color, if the lighter color has a lot of pigment, it will like change the color and it will kind of like it look a little dingy. That's what I was struggling with on this eye, is it just would get a little bit dingy. I was struggling trying to get that shade to not take over the look and tr not completely take over the color of the crease is what was happening. I'm gonna take the Makeup by Mario E5 brush and I'm gonna go into this shade and I'm gonna bring this here on the outer corner. I mean, you guys can see how much pigment there is in these shadows. Like that is a lot of pigment. So I'm gonna move on to the lower lash line and I'm gonna put this top shade right here on the lower lash line. Now I'm gonna see how easy it is to blend out that harsh line where I just put concealer. Because here's the thing, this side is so much better blended than this side, and this is my easier eye. So crossing over is really hard for me, and this is my easy eye, and I can always typically blend this eye so much better. So the fact that this side looks so much better is kind of baffling and I, I think it's all because of this shade right here. That is my suspicion and I mean for this side to look this good and this blended just using that dark shadow, it means that these shades blend really well on their own and I'm not so sure if I want to use any of those lighter shades. Dark shade blends really well on its own. I think it's just me going in with that light shade just kind of threw everything off on this one. But you can see that I only used two shadows with this and this is really pretty. Blended out beautifully. Yeah, I just wish that this looked better. So before I jump off of here and we and I wipe it off, I'm gonna show you what I mean. See all these little marks that I have that needs to be blended? Okay, I'm gonna take a blending brush and I'm gonna go into the shade right here. Okay, I'm gonna tap off but watch how it changes colors as soon as I add that over top to blend it. See? See how it turns it into this like dingy kind of like gray color and then you gotta go back into the dark to put the dark back into it and then it's just this repetitive layering of these shades. You can see how much lighter it went. So that shade is so pigmented that it changes the tone of the crease. So if you have, if you are doing a darker eyeshadow look, I wouldn't use that shade to blend. That's my advice. I would not use the shade to blend. And now it's kind of just like a dusty crease that I'm not, uh, I'm not in love with, but I still have all those lines. So I'm still trying to blend those lines out with that shade. And it just picks up so much, even if you try to tap off, See, it just complete, it has so much pigment, so much pigment. So, I mean, let me turn off the ring light. Is that showing up better? Look how awful that looks after putting that on top of it. And this side is blended beautifully. Like this side has a nice like flow to it. It has a nice blend, not this side. Like this side, going into it and layering it and layering it, it just didn't work. And it might come across the camera good, but in real life, it looks kind of dingy there. So that's just my advice. If you are using this palette, if you put that shade over top and it changes colors, you're not the only one that had that experience because it just happened to me. That's it for look number two. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe both of these off and I will be back and we will jump into look number three, which will be the final look. So this look, I wanna kind of focus on the cool tone side of things. I wanna focus on like these kind of tones here. So we're gonna see how it works. Grab my brush and we're gonna go straight into this pink shade. Ooh. 
Let's see what this will do just on the base of the brow bone over top of that pink, like right there, just to kind of deepen it up. Kind of turns it into a purple, like those two together. I'm gonna take my Smith 253 and I'm gonna go into this purple shade and bring it like right here. Ooh, I have to tell you, these shades are gorgeous. Seriously, very, very, very special. <laughs> very pretty. I like them because they do have that shine to them, but they're not fully opaque. It's like really easy to kind of just spread it and it just, it's, they're gorgeous. Like those shades are really pretty and they're kind of the standout of the palette, to be honest with you. So now I'm gonna grab this shade. I'm gonna bring that like right here. Cause I just wanna play with all the textures, like the different shimmers and stuff like that. And now I'm gonna go into this color and I'm gonna bring that right here on this outer corner, kind of connecting it to the crease. And then kind of buffing it in. I did get some fallout again, so just PS. This palette is so soft, all the textures between like those ethereal shades, the mattes, the shimmers, it's so soft that I would definitely do your eye makeup first before doing your face. Okay, so I'm loving the way that this looks so much better than I did the first look. So much better. Let's go into this purpley gray shade and see what that looks like on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna pop that like right here. I mean, you can see the amount of pigment that these shadows have. Even those light tones, they just, they're super pigmented. Now I'm gonna go into that pink shade and bring a little bit of the pink down onto the lower lash line, just kind of. blending that into it. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and finished the other eye, finished the rest of my makeup. For my face, I decided to grab my only, the only blush that I have for Makeup by Mario, which is in the shade Creamy Peach. It's really pretty. And I recently picked this up because so many of you guys have said that you love this. Like this is one of your favorites from him. So this is the Soft Sculpt transforming skin perfector. Now I have had this one in my collection. So this is the transforming skin enhancer and this is in the shade medium dark and it's a little bit too gray for me in a sense. When I put it on, I don't really like the way that it looks, but I love the way that this looks. When you put your brush into it, it picks up like the dark and the light. So when you grab it like this, that's how it picks up. And then when you apply it, it like applies it kind of in the best way possible. I really like this. This is more of a creamy formula and then it seems like this is more of a powder, but so far, I really like this. So I just barely picked this up during the Sephora sale. By the way, this is in the sh also in the shade medium dark, but this seems a little bit warmer than this, the skin perfecter or skin enhancer. So let me like swatch them. So that's the skin enhancer and then that is the skin perfecter. So this is the cream and then the powder. So it's a little bit more of a redder base, but I really like that. Like this is the first time I've used it was today and it's really, really pretty. Now, as far as lips go, I grabbed my MAC pencil in the shade Strip Down and I grabbed the MAC lipstick in the shade 302 Angel. This has a little bit of shimmer to it and it's a really pretty cool pink. So I thought it would go good 
with this eye look. So that's the makeup on my face. That's it for the application portion of the video. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches. And I'm gonna swatch this palette next to a bunch of other palettes that I have in my collection, just so you guys can get an idea for the tones of this palette and if it's something that you need in your collection. Then once we get through the swatches, I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, you guys, I am back to give my final thoughts. I do hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful. I've been swatching for about the last three hours. My desk is a mess, <laughs> but I knew that this palette in particular, it was really important to share as many swatches and comparisons as I could. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna first start with my thoughts on the palette, and then I will get into palettes that I found that were similar in my collection. First of all, I think the packaging is better than his original packaging. It's plastic and this is plastic, but it feels a little heavier duty. This one kind of has this magnetic closure. It feels a little bit more luxurious than his original packaging, just FYI. Overall, I like the palette. And I really like the color story because this is kind of my color story. I mean, like I mentioned in the intro, I don't know how many times I need to buy a neutral palette, but it just attracts me. And I really think these shades are beautiful. P.S. When I swatched them, I used a brush because when I tried to use my finger, they just don't show up very well. The shades don't feel like they're gonna get hard panned because they are so soft to the touch. But this palette, I think, is just overpriced. I just don't like the price of it. By the way, it's made in USA, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but 
a lot of the times when you're paying these high price points, some of those palettes are coming from Italy, right? Where they create some of the best shadows in the world. And so like some of your Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, all the palettes that are in this price point, nine times out of 10, they're made in Italy and not the USA. So being that this palette is $68 for 12 shades is pretty steep in my opinion. It's just way overpriced. I feel like this palette should have been around $45 to $50 mark. And also this is a limited edition palette. Negative is the price point. The price point in my opinion is overpriced, but I did get 20% off. So I'm happy with the price that I paid for it, saving it on the Sephora sale. If I would have paid a full $68 for it plus tax, I don't know that I would have been that happy. There are some pros and cons with this palette, especially with how I struggled with this shade. So just be kind of mindful of that when you're applying. If you go through the same thing I did, because it's so pigmented, it just wants to overtake and then it changes the look of the colors. So just know that. I think these blend good, but I also think you have to be careful with a palette like this. Because it is a neutral palette, it's gonna be very attractive and everybody's gonna be drawn to it. But just be careful when you're using it because it is very pigmented. And it's kind of something similar to the Pat McGrath formula where you really have to take your time to build the pigment because it is a lot of pigment. You might put too much on and then you're struggling to get it to blend. And then you might go into some of these light shades to help you blend and they're gonna overtake the look. So I can see this palette being a little problematic in that area, but overall, it is a very beautiful palette. I am very happy with it. I like the color story. It's very beautiful. If you guys bought it and you saved the 20%, you're probably loving it at that price point. If you buy it full price, I don't know that you'll feel like you got your $70 worth. That's kind of where I'm coming from. The palette that I found in my collection that I felt that was the most similar is this Tarte Full Bloom palette. This palette has a lot of these like neutral tones. There's so many similarities between these two palettes. I found this palette to be the closest, but there is a difference between these shades right here. So these three shades right here, you're not gonna find in the Full Bloom palette. The Full Bloom are just sh shimmers. They're not that, that wet kind of look on the eye, right? That's what kind of, I think, makes this palette a little bit more unique is that these do give that wet look on the eye. So they're very complimentary too. So even though they have that wet look, I don't feel like they emphasize wrinkles at all, but you really need to love that super sparkly moment in order to justify this. But the nice thing about this is, is you can control the opacity. So if you want it more opaque like I have it, you can pack it on. Or if you want just a light layer of it, just to kind of give a little bit of that glistened look to the eyelid, you have a lot of control over how these shades look. The next palette that I found almost identical is this one from ColourPop. This is the Going Coconuts. This is one of my favorite palettes from ColourPop. It's easy, gorgeous. The only thing that's different between the Going Coconuts and the Makeup by Mario is the Makeup by Mario kind of has that mixture between warm and cool tones, and this is straight up cool tones, and I'm here for it. I absolutely love this Going Coconut palette. I don't know if this is still available, but this is a really good palette. It is. And if if you didn't want to fork out the money for the Makeup by Mario, that is a nice option. The other palette that I compared it to was the Pearl from Wayne Goss, and there were also some similarities. And if you're familiar with his shades that he has in his palettes, that is the type of shades that are in this Makeup by Mario palette. This shade right here, they're more of that wet look, that kind of those lid topper shades, right? So if you have any of Wayne Goss's palettes, you'll know what the shade is. That's pretty much what these shades are. If you're familiar with the Metal Lust palette, this one is kind of the same texture. So I thought about this palette based on the textures and not necessarily the color story, but once I swatched it, 
I was swatching these two shades just so that you guys could see the difference in the sparkle and then the way that the shades looked. I was surprised that this is also very similar to this one from uh, Makeup by Mario. So if you wanted to get the Metal Lust palette from Tom Ford and you didn't want to spend that much on it for four shades, uh, the Makeup by Mario is a nice option, especially if you can save the 20, 15% off, whatever it is. But overall, I think it's a great palette. I do. I think there are some issues with it. And I think as long as you kind of know that going into it, you want to splurge on it and you want to pick it up during the sale, it's a great palette and I think you'll enjoy it. So those are my overall thoughts. Sound out down below. How many of you guys have picked up this palette and are you loving it or are you not loving it? I'm so curious to hear your thoughts. Sound off down below. You guys always know that I love it when you guys share your experience, especially when it differs from mine because it opens the conversation for the comment section and for other viewers to kind of hear both sides of it. So share with us in the comment section down below how your experience has been so far with the palette. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.